Brace yourself. Can't pass up any time now. Collect yourself. Things will never be the same in this sad, sad world. A bit, trying to make the pieces fit to a puzzle With a million missing pieces What I'm feeling fine is when I discover That I'm afraid to blow my cover And there's something very wrong with this So sit back in your home Hey folks, Mr. Childers here, and I am thrilled to welcome you to Ace Classical Studies 2 here at Four Corners Upper School. Um, this video is designed to be viewed during the first day of class, where you will notice uh, you are a small group meeting within a larger other class. Classical Studies 2 meets at the same time as Classical Studies 1. Uh, so this video is designed to be viewed during the first day of school or if you were not able to be with us on the first day of school. If that's not you, if you're going to be here or you were here, you're under no obligation to continue viewing as delightful, as delightful as any opportunity to hear my voice must be. Of course, you're, you're welcome to preview the course by continuing to view also. Um, so, Classical Studies 2. You've all taken Classical Studies 1. You've probably all taken several other ACE courses. ACE is Applied International Certificate of Education. We often call these courses Cambridge courses because they are affiliated with Cambridge University in the United Kingdom. A, uh, a bulwark of knowledge and learning and culture that stretches back to at least the 13th century. So it's got a year or two on us here at Four Corners. Cambridge courses come in two varieties. There is A level, that's the year one course, A level. Excuse me, I'm already give so far I've given you nothing but wrong information. Uh, year one is AS level, and year two, where you are, is A level. AS level is advanced subsidiary, and A level is advanced. So welcome to the big leagues. I have designed this course to mimic the format of the seminar courses you will take in grad school when you're working beyond college, when you're working on a master's degree. Uh, it does not mean that it's master's level work, at least as far as the amount of work, but the format is master's style. Uh, you will work largely independently or collaboratively among peers. This is not a course that has a ton of direct instruction and lecture and commandments and micromanaging from me, though I am available at all times to guide you and help you in any way I can. You'll just, it'll be very important for you because of the independent nature of this course, it'll be very important for you to hone, develop, and use your skills for self-advocacy. If you're struggling with something in this course, if you're struggling with the research, the material, if you don't understand things, um, I'm not giving you a bunch of worksheets and there are no IXL or anything. So I will only know that you're struggling if you tell me or if it's the end of the year and you have now uh, failed, which I don't anticipate. So speak up, speak for yourself, let me know how I can help. Uh, but also this gives you a wonderful opportunity to take initiative and to show yourself what you can do. No one is in this class on accident, except for the, <laughs> the more than half of you who are in this class on accident, who should be in Classical Studies 1, but that will be dealt with. Those of you who are actually in this class are not here on accident. Every one of you is fully capable of excelling. Even, it is quite possible... In some universe, there might be a student who didn't do so great in Classical Studies 1 and still wants to come to Classical Studies 2. That's okay. You are also fully capable of excelling in this course. So what do we do in this course? There are four main components. The year is divided in half, but there are, thankfully this is not ace math, there is a tiny half and a huge half, all right? The tiny half, August, September, October, 
your main focus of your time in class is to prepare for the AS level exam. AS level, that's the Classical Studies 1 exam. So this will be your chance to refresh, renew, and build on the research you did for your original Classical Studies topics. Your Greek topic, Alexander or, oh my goodness, Alexander or Aristophanes or Themes of Greek Vase Painting, and your Roman topic, Augustus Caesar, the Aeneid, or Roman architecture. Uh, the Classical Studies 1 exam is in late October or early November. I will have an exact date for you soon. And your time in the first three months of the course are spent continuing to prepare for that exam. Your exam prep will culminate between October 15th and October 25th, during which time you and those who are covering the same topics as you will be scheduled to student teach those topics to my Classical Studies 1 students. So to give them uh, somewhere between a basic introduction and a deep dive into these topics that you will have been exploring for at least a year and a half, perhaps even longer, because some of you took Classical Studies 1 a couple years ago. There are going to be some in Classical Studies 2 who took Classical Studies 1 not last year, but the year before, and have already taken the Classical Studies 1 exam. That will not impact what's required of you during August, September, and October. You will contribute to, uh, to your classmates' exam preparation, and you will contribute to the student teaching. If it, is, if it is the case that there is a student in the course who has taken the Classical Studies 1 exam and is interested in retaking that exam, talk to me and I will explore that possibility with you. As of right now, this moment, I have no guarantees that I can make. Uh, but if that's the case, I will explore that with you. Those of you who just took Classical Studies 1 last year or for any other reason did not take the Classical Studies 1 exam, the AS level exam, uh, taking that exam is a requirement of Classical Studies 2. So when that exam comes up in October, uh, you need to be there taking it. You'll be awarded 60 points towards your second quarter grade just for having taken the exam, and the exam score will not impact your grade in this class. There are more details on the student teaching requirement posted on Schoology, and of course I am here to help answer any questions you might have. A second component, a very important component, a difficult one to gauge, but a very important component, is student mentoring. Because Classical Studies 2 is meeting at the same time and in the same place as Classical Studies 1, one of the things I ask of you is to offer yourselves as mentors to Classical Studies 1 students and aid them in their own research for their Cambridge topics. Uh, that's a responsibility of yours that will be ongoing throughout the entire year. Help them in any way possible, except do not provide them with a print or electronic copy of any past year's final study guide without my explicit permission. Uh, and be prepared for almost all requests for such permission to be denied. Third component of this class, uh, it's one you'll be familiar with if you took Classical Studies 1, which you did. It's one, uh, one of the more fun aspects of the class, is independent research. Um, just as you did in Classical Studies 1, all students will conduct two independent research projects on topics of your choice. There are certain guidelines for what kind of topics can be chosen, but they are the same the same guidelines that we use in Classical Studies 1. So your independent research topics should relate to the classical world, the ancient world outside of Europe, or medieval literature that's rooted in orature. Uh, the requirements, the, the instructions, almost everything is identical or nearly identical to what the independent project instructions and requirements were for Classical Studies 1, whether you took it last year or the year before. Um, these research projects will most often culminate in either leading the class in an interactive symposium, which you've 
you've probably done and have certainly seen in this class, you know how that works, or in uh, submitting an eight to 10 page research paper uh, in either Chicago style, which is my preferred format, or MLA format, and I'll provide you resources with, with as far as how to uh, format a paper in that way. I was about to pause and say any questions, but this is a uh, video, and that's not how videos work. But if you have any questions and are here in class watching this video on the first day while I talk to Classical Studies 1, obviously feel free to ask me those questions. So that's three of our four components. AS level exam prep with your Classical Studies 1 topics culminating in student teaching. Mentoring Classical Studies 1 students in their Cambridge research, especially on in-class Cambridge workdays. And three, the independent research. The fourth component, you will choose two new Cambridge topics. Uh, this time you will choose, instead of one Greek to topic and one Roman topic, you will choose one historical topic and one literary topic. The choices for history are Athens and Sparta, or Roman emperors and subjects. The, cho the choices for literature are Homeric epic and or Greek tragedy. You don't have to worry about finalizing your choice right now. All the required materials and instructions for those new, the A-level topics, are already up on Schoology. So feel free to look it over. Feel free even to get started. But you don't have to commit to a project topic choice until late October uh, after the Classical Studies 1 exam. And we won't formally form groups for the projects until after the Classical Studies 1 exam in late October. And then at the end of the school year, just as you did in Classical Studies 1, you will prepare uh, detailed master study guides related to both of your topics. All of those instructions are already on Schoology, and they follow basically the same format as uh, Classical Studies 1 did. Um, with, and the same caveat on your historical topic, be sure you do not neglect primary sources. Literary topic, I mean, don't neglect primary sources either, but you almost can't. If your literary topic is Homer, well, your sources are the Iliad and the Odyssey. How are you going to neglect them? Because those are the only things that you have to work with. Uh, this is a class which will not have much structured direct instruction. Uh, well, there will not be many times where I say, today I want you working on exactly this. This is an opportunity for you to take responsibility and ownership over the building of your knowledge, over your own research, over your own work, over your own lives and personhoods, and I'm here to guide you. That doesn't mean that I won't occasionally say, look, guys, we need to, today we all need to do this, but usually you will be uh, deeply, deeply unscaffolded and un- micromanaged in this course. Um, I am very, very happy that you are with us, especially, I mean, I'm happy for everybody, I'm, I'm, for, for two different reasons. Those of you who took Classical Studies 1 more than a year ago, it was a great surprise to see your names on the rosters and to welcome you back. I thought my days of guiding you and your journey through the classics were over, and now here you are, <laughs> plopped right back down into a chair in my classroom, so I'm thrilled about that. And for those of you who were here just last year, I'm thrilled to see you, thrilled you're back, and you've made a wonderful decision. Um, it's not the case that taking Classical Studies 2 is necessary in order to pass the Classical Studies 1 exam, but taking Classical Studies 2 has been the strongest predictor of success on the Classical Studies 1 exam. Student, the, the pass rate on Classical Studies 1 exam for students who have taken Classical Studies 2 is somewhere around the 90% mark, which is substantially higher than the wider uh, population of budding classicists. Just like Classical Studies 1, successful completion of the exam will result in you being awarded three college credits. Uh, so between Classical Studies 1 and Classical Studies 2, that's a total of six college credits earned. 
Please let me know. We're here together all year, and I'm happy to help you any way I can. Um, you'll be in class while Classical Studies 1 is doing its thing, including uh, going over the Iliad, so you get to experience that again uh, on days when we're reading the Iliad in class. If you're not otherwise uh, occupied in Classical Studies 2 research, you're welcome to join us and be part of that. Uh, Thank you, for, uh, thank you for being with me yet again. You've taken my classes before. You keep coming back. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, you must really, really be suckers for punishment. But uh, let's have a wonderful year together. Trying to make the pieces fit to a puzzle With a million bits and pieces What I'm feeling fine is when I discover That I'm afraid to blow my cover And there's something very wrong with this So get back in your hole Or get back in your cave If I'm going down, I'm taking someone with me